and currents of air to fly. He also spotted this spiral pattern or vortex in water. He began to see the vortex pattern everywhere. Using his unique powers of deduction, Leonardo started to wonder if this was how blood moved through the human heart. This was at a time when no one even knew that blood circulated. Scientist Mori Garib has discovered an experiment that Leonardo devised to see if his theories were correct. For him, there was a universal concept of vortex formation, and he knew that the same mechanism should occur inside the body through the heart valves, and that must be a fundamental process that helps the heart to work. But he needs to convince himself, because he did not have an X-ray system to see the inner working of the body. And that's, to me, the most amazing part. He built a model of the aortic valve. He built a model of aorta. And then he says, look at the vortices that they are formed around those heart valves. That was the conclusion of the statement. So he did not confine himself to thinking about the problem. He went there and actually test his ideas. Professor Morigarib has recreated the da Vinci heart model, which confirms Leonardo's theory of vortex formation was right. Modern scientists only made this discovery 18 years ago with the aid of high-tech imaging equipment. Leonardo figured it out from his studies of nature and went on to design an artificial heart valve that's the equal of 21st century medical science. So in practice, if the materials that he used were the correct materials in terms of biocompatibility, uh, the design would be perfect for any aortic valve replacement today. Francis Wells is a leading cardiac surgeon specializing in heart valve reconstruction. He sees the real heart in operation every day. Two forceps, please. Now keep that up straight. Right, Jono, if you tie that for me. He's staggered by Leonardo's understanding of the workings of this complex organ. We've just been doing a case now, an aortic valve, and the stunning thing is, he drew exactly what we see now today when we're looking at the function of these valves. I mean, this is an actual valve in a pulse duplicator, open and closed. These are Leonardo's drawings. This is the valve open, this is the valve closed. This is absolutely extraordinary. How did he know that? He must have done the experiment that we think he did in this paper by uh, Mori Gorov, where he looked at the flow across this valve, showing these columns of blood flowing through the valve, swirling round, producing the vortices which close the valve, exactly as you see in current day contemporary experiments. This is quite extraordinary because not only did he actually think of it, he went out and he designed designed an experiment. He blew the glass tube, he fed, we think, grass seeds into it. This is what he, he reports. Then he actually watched the grass seeds swirling around, which he then deduced as what happened in the aortic valve, and described the closure mechanism of the aortic valve 500 years before we knew what happened. I mean, this is just phenomenal. How, how did the man think of that? So beautiful, accurate, and relevant today. In his mid-50s, Leonardo was busier than ever. He was still pursuing his own private projects, especially in anatomy, and he'd started his most famous painting, the Mona Lisa. By now, his reputation had spread, and he was very much in demand working for the Florentine Council and the French who ruled Milan. These rival states, constantly on the brink of war, vied for Leonardo's attentions. He spent a great deal of his time traveling between these two great cities. Leonardo was a man of many contradictions. A military engineer who hated war. He filled notebooks with insights about the world, but revealed little about himself. He was in awe of the human body, but described men as mere channels for excrement to pass through. Leonardo was a complex individual. He seems to have been a very kind and gentle soul in some ways. He liked to buy birds in the market in Florence and let them free just so they wouldn't suffer. The poor man may be a vegetarian.